Greetings, everybody. This is Bob, Bob Hilt, and the radio show, To the Hilt. We're going to systematically go through the Bible. Yesterday's program, we went through the Godhead, or the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Or Holy Spirit, if you prefer. In that, we discussed how Jesus created Adam, man, in his image. So, do we know what Jesus looked like? Let us take a look at what the Bible has to say. Now, in the book of Revelation, we have an idea of what Jesus looked like. You know, it's very interesting that almost every Bible preacher I know will tell you and lie, or perhaps they don't know, but I think they're lying personally. Well, we don't know what Jesus looked like. Well, in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, and verse, starting in verse 14, we absolutely do have a description of what Jesus looks like. John turns around and he gives this description. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Doesn't say his hair was woolly. It says it was white as wool, as white as snow. Of course, the so called black Hebrews will say, oh, his hair, it be woolly. No, doesn't say that. It says it's white as wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Have you ever seen a gas stove? What color is the flame? Well, if you set it to its hottest setting, the flame is blue. His eyes is a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the voice, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Now, brass is made out of copper, which is a reddish golden color, not black. But did you know that if you burned brass in a furnace, it burns white hot with a golden brownish tint to it? Take a look on YouTube. I'm not making this up. So, was Jesus white? Well, it looks like it when you read the Bible. What about the word Adam? What in the world does the word Adam mean in the Hebrew? Well, before they started rewriting the words, if you took a look at the word Adam from the 70s or 80s concordances, such as Strong's. Adam comes from the Hebrew word number 119 and 120. 120. 119 and 120. It meant to show blood in the face, to be able to blush, flush, to be turned rosy, be dyed, made red, or ruddy. And if you look up the word ruddy, it means reddish. Now you could say, well, you know, that's the American Indians. But have you ever seen somebody when they drank too much and they turn flush? Somebody with white colored skin, they turn red. How about being able to blush? 
Black people can't blush. Can Asians blush? I've never seen it. Negroes certainly cannot blush. How about Indians? American Indians. Can they blush? No dark-skinned people can blush. Only whites blush. Now, ruddy, the definition of ruddy is having a healthy reddish color, a ruddy complexion, rosy red blush, as in the Irish are ruddy. Some of them, anyways. You ever heard of women putting blush on their face, on their cheeks to make them look red? How about ruddy lipstick? Huh. Yeah. How about the Bible book, The Song of Solomon? Solomon was talking about his beloved. Chapter 5 and verse 10. My beloved is white and ruddy. The chief is among 10,000. Huh. Doesn't sound like talking about Africa, does it? No. How about the book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 7? Now remember, Jesus was called Jesus of Nazareth. We read, her, Nazarite, her Nazarites were pure than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. What color are rubies? They're red. Their polishing was of sapphire. Hmm. Very interesting, huh? Now, David, King David, future King David, when he was facing Goliath, the Philistine, the giant, We read in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 42. Speaking of Goliath. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. Countenance uh, basically means complexion. A fair complexion. And, of course, they'll tell you, oh, fair means beautiful. Well, I think fair complexions are beautiful, but fair means white. You ever heard of uh, the Wicked Witch going in, in the, what was it, the cartoons, Snow White? She says, mirror, mirror on the wall, or is it magic mirror on the wall? Who's the fairest of them all? Oh, snow white, not snow black, not snow red, not snow yellow, snow white. Hmm. So, fair countenance is a fair complexion according to Webster's 1828 dictionary. So, is there... A reason why the almost all your churches from a hundred years ago were in countries that were predominantly inhabited by white people. Think about it. Where were all the churches built? The United States, Europe, I mean was China, Japan, Mongolia, India, South America, Africa, Central Africa. Were any of those places known for building churches to honor Jesus Christ? I don't think so. I've never seen any. So, huh. And you wonder, why, why is it that uh, it used to be 
if you were Christian, they would call you a wasp, a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Why is that? Just goes with the territory, if you ask me. I mean, let's face it. Who printed the Bibles? Uh, Germany, England, the United States. Uh, was it Asia or is it Africa? No. No, who printed the Bibles and built all the churches? White nations, people. The white nations have enjoyed the highest standard of living in the world. Why is that? Is it because they oppressed everybody else that was people of color? Or was it because God had blessed us for honoring his son? Why are they, why is the uh, news media that hates Jesus Christ, by the way, why are they always pushing for integration of the races? Well, if you take a look at the book of Ezra chapter 2, I'm sorry, the book of Ezra chapter 9 and verse 2, speaking of Israel coming out of captivity, we read, For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed, holy seed, H-O-L-Y, as in sacred and set apart, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands, yea, the hand of the princes and rulers hath been chief in this trespass. What's a trespass? It's a sin. Now, if there's a holy seed, doesn't that beg the question that there has to be an unholy seed? I would think so. Seems like it, don't it? So, now if Jesus was white and he's God in the flesh, or before he was just God the Son, and he created man in his image, wouldn't Adam have been white? Now, let me ask you a question. If Adam was white, and you can trace, via the flesh anyways, between Mary and Joseph, all the way back to Adam, going through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel, wouldn't they have all been white too? I mean, Jesus in the beginning was white, Adam was white, and then Adam, uh, is, um, I'm sorry, Jesus in the flesh was white. Wouldn't they've all been white? I mean, it makes sense, really, when you think about it. Now, where did the other races come from? If you listen to modern preachers, they'll tell you, well, you know, Adam uh, gave us a bunch of different children, and, you know, one was white, one was black, one was red, one was yellow. Or they go so far as to say, well, you know, it was Noah and his sons. You know, you had a white one, a black one, and a yellow one. And that's where, you know, they all split off and yeah, blah. Sounds like, to me, that sounds like evolution. Because the Bible teaches kind after his kind. I mean, let's face it. Bluebirds produce bluebirds. Cobras produce cobras. Lions produce lions. I mean, it's just the way it works, isn't it? You know? Barracudas produce barracudas. Goldfish produce goldfish. That's just the way it is. Now, were there other races before 
or after Adam? Hmm. Were there other races before Adam? Well, let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 31, because the Bible seems to indicate, yes, there was. And the Bible also talks about living creatures and beasts of the field. Do you know in the book of Jonah, there are beasts of the field that wore clothing that could cry mightily to God and were told to turn from the evil in their hands? You know, this was common knowledge a hundred years ago. It's only been since the enemy took control of modern-day churches that all of this has become a hate crime. Think about it. When they can't prove you wrong, what do they do? They call you names. Oh, you're racist. Now, if you are being uplifted in pride, just remember, that was the sin of Satan, or Lucifer, or the devil, or whatever you want to call him. He was lifted up in pride and said, I want to be the top dog. If anything, we should be humbled that the Lord chose us of all the people of the earth. And we're going to get more into that when we study Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob Israel. We're going to go into that in more detail, God willing, of course. But that's the thing. The Bible has always been the white man's book. Let's face it, it always has been. And I think it always will be. So, all right, let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 31. I believe this chapter shows that there were other beings when Adam and Eve, when Adam was formed from the dust of the ground and Eve was taken from his rib. Why do I say that? Now, if you read the story in Genesis where Cain killed Abel, now we're going to go to Genesis chapter 4. And people, if you've never read the entire Bible from cover to cover, you're doing yourself an extreme disservice. You really are. With the way things are going and with Bible prophecy getting ready to be fulfilled, you need to know this book. You really do. So let's go to Genesis chapter 4. And let's see. Let's start in verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. So Cain kills Abel. Now guess what? If you talk to the so-called black Hebrews, they will tell you that Cain is a white man. That God's black... Adam and Eve were black, Abel was black, and Satan is white. And Satan seduced black Eve, and out came white Cain. And guess what? The nation of Islam believes basically along those lines too. They believe whites are of the devil, and there'll be no peace on this earth until the last white devil is dead. Wow. So much for love thy neighbor, huh? So let's 
So Cain rose up against his brother Abel, against Abel his brother, and slew him. Verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? It's not my day to watch him, Lord. So he lies about it instead of saying, uh, well, he's buried over there. Verse 10. And he, the Lord, and he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood, blood, the life is in the blood. Remember that. The life is in the blood. The Bible says the life is in the blood. That's why we're not to drink the blood. Evidently, he killed his brother's body, but his soul and spirit was crying out to the Lord. The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Verse 11, And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Verse 12, when thou tillest the ground, you know, farmers, they till the ground, they plow. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. So here it is, God is cursing Cain that anything he plants will not yield any fruit. Nothing. So anything Cain plants is not going to yield fruit. I, I don't, I'm, now I believe perhaps it'll grow. It'll probably grow, but it's not going to yield anything that he could eat for food. You know, you can grow a tomato plant, but there won't be any tomatoes on it, just leaves and a stalk. And you know, I strongly suggest you look around the world. Take a look at all groups of people. Is there any group of people that are never farmers? Is there any group of people that are never farmers? Well, the Amish are farmers. White people are farmers. Black Africans, some of them are farmers. Asians grow food. Is there a group of people on this earth that never farm? What kind of jobs would they have to be? Oh, they'd have to be merchants and shopkeepers, uh, insurance, banking. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, if you can't grow food... You'd have to be money lenders. You know, you'd have to do different kind of stuff, right? Huh. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Is there a group of people that have always been vagabonds? They're always running around from one place to the other because maybe they get kicked out of over a hundred different countries and places in the world? Oh, I don't know. Can you think of any? Huh. Verse 13. And Cain said unto the Lord, Oy vey, my punishment is greater than I can bear. 14. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Now, wait a minute. If it's just Adam and Eve and Cain, why, why is he all of, all of a sudden worried about somebody slaying him, killing him? Is, is is Cain going to be killed by his mother, Eve? Is he going to be killed by Adam? I don't think so. Maybe. 
But we're going to look at more into this in a minute. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. I wonder what that was. I really don't know. Lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Verse 17. Listen to this carefully, people. And Cain knew his wife. Where did Cain get a wife from? Pre-existing people before Adam and Eve? Or a sister? I mean, there's really not that many choices. Unless, of course, he married his mother. Think about it. Who did he marry? Did he marry a sister? Or did he marry a female that existed from the people from Ezekiel chapter 31? And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, not the Enoch that was taken by the Lord. No, no, different Enoch. And he builded a city. Now, wait a minute. Cain has a wife and a, and a baby boy, and he built a city? Why would you build a city for three people? No, it says he built a city. You don't build a city for three people. And I think the King James Bible has it right. So obviously in Ezekiel 31, which we're going to get to, there were already people on the face of the earth. And, and Cain went there. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Wow. So, yeah. Makes you wonder, don't it? So, now I want to take a look at Ezekiel chapter 31. Were there other races before Adam and Eve? Very possible. You know, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 24 and 25, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature, two-legged or four-legged. Let the earth bring forth the living creature after its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so, after his kind... You know, if two white people get married, they have a white baby, don't they? If a white husband and a white wife, and she has a black baby, you know there's uh, something in the woodshed. Yeah, it don't happen. You know, you get two blacks together, they have black children. That's just the way it is. So... And the beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image. Now, that word man is synonymous with Adam. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Remember, we talked about what Jesus looked like. Jesus created heaven and earth. We know what Jesus looked like. We know what Adam means. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. What does dominion mean? It comes from the same word as domination, rulership. 
hasn't there been times in history when the white race has ruled the world? I mean, at least over the last few hundred years. Think about it. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. Hasn't God blessed the white race when we uplifted Christ? Oh yeah, absolutely. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. The world says, Don't have children, abort them. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every living thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. Verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Now in Job 38, the sons of God, the angels, shouted for joy at the creation of the earth. So evidently, God had created all the angels, since they're not enumerated anywhere here in Scripture, when God created the angels. Logically, it would seem that they were in creation before the earth. Read Job 38. I'm not making this stuff up. We'll go more into that in later chapters, but... We're not there yet. But, but in 31 it says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. So evidently up to this point, everything's very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Evidently Satan had not fallen yet. And the fallen angels, the third of the angels that followed uh, Satan and fell from heaven. That is my logical conclusion. So, because in Job 38, said that the sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. Well, they couldn't be mankind because Adam didn't come until, what, the sixth day? He didn't come until the sixth day. You know, that's why the number of a man is six, 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 the number of a man, because he was created on the sixth day. So the earth, the sons of God shouted for joy at the creation of the earth. And then six days after the earth was created, God took the dust of the earth and gave man a body and then breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So the angels had to have existed prior to the earth. So let's take a look at that real quick. All right, in Job 38, verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? So he's basically saying, You don't know what you're talking about, Job. Verse 3. Gird up now thy loins like a man. In modern terms, that would be, why don't you put your pants on like a man? For I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. I'm going to ask you something, and I want you to give me a quest, uh, an answer. Verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declareth thou hast understanding. 
So where were you, Job, when I was creating the foundations of the earth, huh? Verse 5. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who, who hath stretched the line upon it? Where upon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? These are all building terms for those of you that are not in the construction industry. Verse 7. When the morning stars sang together... And all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, in verse 4, we're talking about the foundations, laying the foundations of the earth. And then when you get to verse 7, it says the morning star sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, how could they be singing for joy if they were mere humans at the foundation of the earth? Because the earth was created, and then six days later, Adam was formed from the dust of the earth. They could not have been mankind. These sons of God, the morning stars, had to be angels. There's just no other way around it. Now, in the Old Testament, Sons of God are angels. In Luke chapter 3, Adam is called a son of God. Jesus is called the only begotten son of God. But believers are not called sons of God until they are born again of the Holy Spirit. So mankind, Adam kind, is not called a son of God, or sons of God, until the New Testament and the Holy Spirit. So, when you contrast this with Genesis chapter 6, when the sons of God married the daughters of men, and they had giants for children? Oh boy, we're going to get to that. So these sons of God had to have existed when the earth foundation was being created. They had to be angels. The book of Genesis does not tell you on the first day God created the angels. It doesn't say that. Now it does say the Lord created... Now concerning stars, Genesis 1... 14 says, And God said, Let there be lights, lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So, I guess this is the lights in the sky. I guess that's stars, right? I mean, there you go. So, let's go take a look at Ezekiel chapter 31. 